in a church where orthodoxy has become optional. It is not long before orthodoxy will be outlawed. Last summer in the General Synod in July, people expressing historic, orthodox, biblical, Anglican, uh, Anglicanism, basic things that we believe that are there in the 39 Articles and in the prayer book were booed in General Synod. I think we've got to get over the idea that we can ever define God. I really worry about people who can tell me who God is. And the idea that we were born in sin is a very strange idea when you're past Darwin. Traditional Christianity assumes that you are guilty. The woodshed theory of the atonement says that human beings are evil. We've been bad boys and girls. We deserve to be punished. And God, the heavenly sheriff, takes us out to the heavenly woodshed and God gets ready to beat us for our sins and at the last moment, Jesus steps in. Now, you're a good Brit. You're from mm -hmm. jolly old England and you have a new Archbishop of Canterbury mm -hmm. who, who's a, a good acquaintance of yours. Yes. Uh, good choice for England and the Anglican Communion? Uh, yes, choice is perhaps a, a difficult word to use, of course, the Church of England, because mm -hmm. who chooses? Mm -hmm. When the, the Archbishop of Canterbury Rowan Williams announced that he was leaving. I thought, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if Justin could be made Archbishop of Canterbury? But he hasn't been at Durham long enough. I mean, Justin is a very um, sincere person. He's a very uh, good person. Um, he knows what he believes and he sticks to it. And uh, but he's been respected uh, because. Uh, unlike Rowan Williams, whom you never quite knew what Rowan Williams was saying. I don't want to sound negative towards him personally, but he was an academic and you know, he would express things in a very convoluted way. And people go away and say, what was that all about? And nobody really knew you know, what side he would come down on and <laughs> particular things. And he made a lot of enemies as a result because even people who supported him initially um, turned against him because they, they weren't getting what they thought he was offering them uh, you know, on different issues. Uh, so uh, Justin is not like that. I mean, he's quite clear. He's very straightforward. Everybody knows where they stand, um, you know, with him, and take it or leave it. And he is respected for that. Um, let's just make it really easy now. Is gay sex sinful? Do you know we've done r religion, we've done politics. Why am I surprised that? You've brought in sex. Because I, I feel sorry for Tim Farron. I feel sorry for Tim Farron. Who keeps being asked this question. He's the only one who does. So I'm asking you. You know very well that that's a question that I can't give a straight answer to. Why not? Sorry, it's a badly phrased <laughs> way of answering the question. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. I should have thought that one through. Um, because I don't do con blanket condemnation of people. People expressing those views were booed in General Synod. The trigger was the, the July Synod. Right. Um, whilst that was clear, the, the mass were off. The determination, the aggression of the progressives and that no discipline was, was, was taken um, right. indicated this is the trajectory and there's no, there's no, no turning back from this now. <clears throat> One of the key things that had happened, obviously, uh, which I know uh, Christian Concern picked up, uh, was uh, five years ago when York Minster, uh, Canon at York Minster, decided to bless the Gay Pride right. uh, thing. And then I went on um, the local radio, um, Minster Radio, actually, and, and everything then blew up. <clears throat> I then got you know, high profile. It was, it was to do with the Canon of York Minster, actually. Right blessing gay pride uh, and that got national coverage 
and um, that was a pretty intense time. I mean, it was like really being thrown into a, a, a whirlwind. Yeah. Uh, and it took me by surprise, <laughs> really, I don't know why. Um, and it was a very intense time and very hard for me personally and my family. Uh, you know, the, the hate mail you get right. uh, is phenomenal. Um, but it was also the making of the church, actually, um, because this, this was, if you like, a wake-up call. This is what happens if you do speak out uh, for the truth. And this has happened to the minister who's been there for 23, 24 years who looked after them and cared for them. And to see that I got very little, in fact, no backing at all uh, from the Church of England establishment, quite the opposite. Um, and um, our folk think, well, this is not right. You know, he's supposed to be the good guy, support, you know, standing for what the Church of England is supposed to stand for, and yet is treated in this way. So that was, again, a major psychological um, thing for our congregation. So in January after the PCC had met I went to see the bishop, my first meeting with him and uh, said I'm terribly sorry bishop but in conscience I can no longer submit to the house of bishops uh, because of this guidance. Now you think well maybe that's a bit strong and in, in one way it is yes um, but there are lots of injunctions in the New Testament about saying if people uh, will not teach the pure word of God, if they're going to teach error, if uh, they're going to pollute or dilute that purity, then uh, we need to watch out uh, and we need to avoid them. That's the word that Paul uses in Romans 16. In fact, he goes further than that. He says, look, if you welcome someone like that, uh, and uh, you're actually uh, complicit in their wicked works. That's uh, the Apostle John saying it in uh, 2 John 10. So for that reason, uh, that sort of meant that I was in a, uh, a bit of a quandary. Uh, and I don't think I expected to be here. Uh, it slightly took me by surprise. Before Christmas, I was in denial. And as I read around it, uh, uh, I uh, was sort of coming to realize it was a big issue. Now, I'm not the only one who thought, thought that. In fact, 2,000 clergy from around the UK wrote to the House of Bishops an open letter saying, bishops, we think you need to think again about this guidance. Uh, 2,000 clergy and another 1,000 leading laity, PCC members, church wardens, members of synods, all of that sort of thing, up and down the country. Uh, please think again, bishops. And when it came to February synod, they said, no, no, we've issued the guidance and it'll stand. My dear Christian friend in Great Britain, more and more Christians are leaving mainline churches to join faithful networks of churches. I want to conclude today by reading two paragraphs from Gerald Bray and then a piece of scripture to encourage us. On page 607, Gerald Bray writes, The fearful prospect looms of a world in which Orthodox Christians will have to leave the mainstream churches in order to remain faithful to the gospel. And the future of Christian witness in Britain, Ireland and the world may hang on the outcome. And then another network he discusses on page 616. Listen to this. One of the most remarkable features of modern British Christianity has been the explosion of independent churches, almost all of which are evangelical. And then later on he says, the Fellowship of Independent Evangelical Churches now has more than 600 congregations and so far at least seems to be resisting the overall pattern of decline. And I belong to a church uh, who's part of this fellowship and I just want to finish with one piece of scripture that we've been doing this past few weeks to encourage you if you are wrestling with leaving a mainline church and joining a faithful congregation. In 2 Corinthians 4, Paul writes to the Corinthians, he says, Therefore, 
since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. My friend, do not lose heart if you are bullied, if you are persecuted for being faithful to Jesus Christ. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. My friend, if you're in a denomination that distorts the word of God, it is time to move and align with those who are faithful. Paul says, on the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. My friend, may the Lord Jesus Christ have mercy on us. May we be faithful to him. May we be willing to realign with those who are faithful to Christ and brings glory to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Music